Hey cave peeps and welcome back to the man cave, the channel you've never heard of, and welcome to my first official top 10 SNES list. Okay guys, so um, before you get mad at me and crucify me, just know that this is my top 10 favorite list and probably not going to be yours, okay? I haven't played every Super Nintendo game there is, but the ones I have played, well, this is my top 10 list, okay? And before we get started, I want to do a quick shout out to my good friend Felix Faction. He runs a really cool YouTube channel that you guys should definitely check out. I'm going to put the link in the description so you can go check for yourselves. He helped me out with the uh, the countdown on this video, so I hope you guys enjoy it and, uh, well, let me know what you think. Starting off our list at number 10 is Goof Troop. And in a nutshell, Goof Troop is basically just a puzzle game. You have to use various items found in each stage to defeat the enemies because you can't attack directly. Solving the puzzles permit you to advance the stage as well. It's a great game that I enjoyed playing as a kid with my younger cousin because this game also supports two players. You can play as Max and or Goofy. If you've seen this game in the wild, go and pick it up because you won't regret it. Go Go Power Rangers! Oh my god, does this game bring back memories or what? And don't be confused with the side scrolling beat em up Power Rangers game though. This game is the fighting edition. Fuck yeah. In a nutshell, you play as all the classic Megazords from the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series. Here I chose the Tiger Megazord and opened up a can of whoop ass. This game has amazing controls and amazing visuals for its time. I highly, highly recommend this one. Ren and Stimpy was everywhere when I was a kid. It was basically my generation's version of Adventure Time, or whatever it is kids watch these days. There was a bunch of Ren and Stimpy games for the SNES, but this one was my favorite. Ren is basically a chihuahua with emotional problems, and Stimpy is his kinda stupid cat friend. Which is the reason I love this game, it was like controlling my favorite cartoon. It's a standard platformer with sweet graphics and awesome audio. Go check it out. So this game, wow, where do I start? Ah, oh, Mario Kart. I would always go over to my friend Mike's house to play this game with him and his brother. It was just such an awesome multiplayer game that really brought out that competitive spirit in you. Just when you think you're about to win the race, you get hit with a shell from behind, and there goes your friend laughing in your face as like he wins the race and stuff. Needless to say, a few controls were broken while playing this game. I don't know about you, but if you didn't watch Disney movies as a kid, you had no childhood in my book. You never knew what you were going to get when you see a game based on a movie. But usually if it's Disney, hmm, it might be a good one. And they sure got it right with The Lion King, an awesome platformer with stunning audio. Sometimes I felt like I was watching a movie instead of playing the game, which was like, mind blow for me as a kid. Hands down, a classic. Similar to The Lion King, we have Aladdin. However, this one gets a number 5 spot just because I couldn't decide which one I like better, The Lion King or Aladdin. What makes Aladdin great in my opinion are the same reasons I love The Lion King so much. They're both amazing games that really make you feel like you're in the movie. The graphics for me were just mind blowing at the time. However, I wish I would have played the Genesis version as a kid just because in the Genesis version, or Mega Drive if you live outside the US, is that you get to use a sword. Damn you Nintendo. Damn you to hell. Coming in at number 4 we have Mega Man X2. I know most people love the hell out of Mega Man X and I'm right there with you, but for me Mega Man X2 is just better overall. For example, riding a future motorcycle? Fuck yeah. Show you can ability? Hell yeah. When I was a kid, I would play this with my cousin every weekend at his house. We had to find everything on our own through trial and error. Finding capsules, E-tanks, health hearts, and zeros scattered body parts all over the game. This game is amazing, enough said. Alright you guys, so I warned you there'd be at least one cliche game on my top 10 list. And at number 3 we have Super Mario World. I really don't have to explain to you why this game is so amazing, because you should've played this game by now, and if you did, you know why it's so awesome. Actually, come to think of it, I think my Super Nintendo came with a copy of Super Mario World. I remember no matter how much I thought I found every secret in this game, I would find a new keyhole or some other kind of hidden secret the next day. Oh, and if that didn't convince you enough that this game is awesome, one word. Yoshi. Oh. 
Teenage Mutant Ninja fucking Turtles define my childhood. No, like seriously, I love this game. So one day I'm in my room playing Super Nintendo, of course, and my sister comes in without knocking, as usual. Before I had a chance to yell at her to get the fuck out of my room, she hands me two games, one of which was being this marvelous work of art. A 2D fighting game featuring the ninja fucking turtles, man, are you serious? I had just gone to sewer heaven. Special moves and super moves were just but a small taste of what this game had to offer its players. Thanks sis, I appreciate it. So yeah, coming in at number one you guys is Secret of Mana. I really don't know how many times I'm going to mention this game on this channel, but if you haven't figured it out by now, I love this game. This was the other game my sister bought for me the same day that she bought me Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. It's funny because I had no idea what an RPG was at the time, and I had never played one either. When I first played Secret of Mana, I actually hated it and I chucked it in the corner and kept playing Ninja Turtles. And then for whatever reason, I just popped this game in one day and fell in love with it. And actually, this really opened up the door for me to fall in love with other JRPGs. Because if it had not been for Secret of Mana, I wouldn't be a JRPG fan like I am today. 